making this statement. I'm an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm a child of God. God is with me. Peace is mine. Joy is mine. Victory is mine. Hope is mine. Eternity is mine. And God is all that I need. May you be blessed now. I am so excited, so, so happy to be in the midst of God's people who I know they are servants of the Lord. All of us are servants of the Lord. And that's why we are here, because we are servants of the Lord. We have been going through situation in life, and that's why we've been longing to come to God's house. David said, I was glad they said, when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And here we are, in the house of the Lord, to be blessed, to be replenished, to be energized, to be uh, happy in the Lord. Thank you, Bishop. Bishop Kimani, for that wonderful introduction for me, my family, my excellent members of my family, my brother, uh, Peterson Marira, just want to comment a little bit about my brother. He's my elder brother, he's the elder, of our, uh, elder brother of our family, and he's a role model in our lives. He's been a blessing. I was, I was born again first in the family, and then he was second. And he's been such a blessing the times we've been here, uh, coming from U.S. and coming here, he hosted by them, and I really appreciate that. May God bless you. Um, and also, uh, I want to say that uh, I'm married with one wife. Bishop introduced uh, uh, her. She has been a blessing to my life. And this couple here, they have also been such a blessing. Original Deliverance Church. They have been original members of Deliverance Church. And a little bit of Deliverance Church, where it came from, uh, it's a long story, but I won't go into that. But I want to make a report that we went to America, and I've been in America for the last time. Uh, 20 years, coming in and out. But I thank God that uh, we went to America with a message of salvation, the message of Deliverance Church, where we were born, where we were raised in. Deliverance Church is based on Book of Isaiah 61, verse 1, with a message of salvation, deliverance, and healing. And that's all what the Deliverance Church is all about. Salvation, deliverance, and healing. The world needs that continually. There's no way. The world needs deliverance, salvation, and healing. And my message, the Lord that has laid on my heart, for us today, summons of God, including you and me and everybody, is based on the book of First Samuel. And before we read, I want to bring greetings uh, from U.S. Phoenix, Arizona, where Bishop and his wife, Pastor Alice, came and they just found us in a, starting a church. And we were in our home. And that's where we started our church. Just like uh, the way the, the background of Deliverance Church started just basically from somewhere in a fellowship in a home. And then it came up. The, most of them, that's how they were birthed. So the same in the U.S. we came up with the message of uh, we wanted to start in a church, deliverance church, until we call it Deliverance Worship Center. Praise God. And we, when Bishop came, we are just having services in our home. But God has, um, in the Christmas, we moved from the house to uh, a hall, and that hall was for her uh, that... Uh, could, uh, could occupy only about 20 people. But now we are in a bigger hall occupying 100 people. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And thank God. We have uh, my wife as a pastor, and we have two other uh, associate pastors, young men who love the Lord and are ready to serve the Lord. Thank God for that. Praise God. Uh, the book of uh, 1 Samuel 16.
First Samuel 16 from verse 13. And I'll read um, a few verses. Then Samuel took a horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. The Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose and went to Ramah. But, note this verse, please. The Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. A distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. Mark that. And Saul's servant all said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling, is troubling you. <coughs> Let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp, and it shall be that he will play it in his hands when a distressing spirit from the Lord is upon you, and you shall be well. So Saul said to his servants, Provide me a man who can play well and bring him to me. Then one of the servants answered and said, Look, I have seen a son of Jesse, of Bethlehemite, who is a skillful in praying, a mighty man of Bela, a man of war, a prudent in speech, a handsome person, and the Lord is with him. Verse 19. Therefore Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is with, who is with the ship. Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and goat, a young goat, and sent them out to son by his son David to Saul. So David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his arm bearer. Then Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Please let David stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. So it was. Whenever the Spirit from the Lord from God was upon Saul that David would take a harp and play it with his hand. So, uh, this, then Saul would become refreshed and the distressing spirit would depart. Then we turn on chapter 18. Just uh, bear with me. And it was so that when he had finished speaking to Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was lit to the soul of David. So Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Leave it at that. I want to bring a message to us as a church on overcoming life's battles. Life's battles are many. Yes, we are here in the house of the Lord. We are here in the church. And we got ready. We've been going through some stuff throughout the week. And we decided to come to the house of the Lord. And it's good. But behind each one of us, I think each one of us has been having battles. Going through some battles in life. And these battles are ever there. And the battles have been there even in the Bible land. A life full of battles. We read the Bible. Battles have been there. Wars have been fought between nations, tribes. Battles have been ever there. So, nothing new about battles. Battles have been there. And um, even if at the time of, of uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, he had battles in his life. He had the uh, Sadducees, Sadducee people, priests who were against him, bring the message of salvation to the world. And he had battles in the life, in his life. Battles, 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 battles. And the battles
battles will continue to be in our lives. There have been battles all over, even in this country. We open the TV, the media, hear the, preacher, uh, the, the politicians speak, they're talking about, you listen carefully, and there are battles all over. Battles of words, war of words, all over. These battles may. And so in life, there has to be battles. And that's why the Bible says, many are the preachers of the righteous. But the Lord knoweth them all. So the Lord knoweth, knows that we have to go through situations. We have to go through many battles in life. In the U.S., I, I see a lot of people going through a lot, challenges in life, battling uh, about issues in life. So it's normal for a human being to go through these battles. And that's why we see here in this scripture that is bringing us an illustration of the depth of the battles that we go through. Here we have in this scripture an illustration of Saul was anointed of God to be a king. And in those days, God used to be operating through the kings that he anointed as his servant. And a time came when Saul was disobedient and rebelled against God. He was still anointed. He was still anointed. And God saw that since he has disobeyed and was in rebellion, the anointing was taken away. How many times do we ourselves, the moment we get born again and we ask God to be in our, in our lives, and the Spirit of God comes in our lives and we get born again and we get the feeling of the Holy Spirit. But then in life, there has been, there are rebellions. There is a lot of disobedience in our midst, in our lives. And that's what, co what causes these battles. We have, we go through a lot when we don't obey the word of God and walk with God closely so that we avoid those battles in this life. And Saul here disobeyed God. And the anointing was taken over by David, son of Jesse. That anointing to be taken over, there was a battle. And Saul could sense that there's something that's happening. And he actually decided to fight David in his, in his young age compared his age, the two, the age must be very, very big, but he decided to kill him and to bring battles, fight him, fight David all the time. And here we are, we see the illustration in the Bible that when they were fighting and he was pursuing David to kill him, so that he doesn't talk, take over the leadership or the kingship. And he fought uh, using all kinds of means. And David knew that he was, that Saul wanted to kill him. So, the, um, the battles, that's why David decided to walk with God, to walk closely with God and to depend upon God and not to fight back with Saul. How many times in our lives have we been fighting each other? Fighting the preachers? Fighting the pastors? Through words? Through means, whatever my means that we have. And that's where the battles are. And that's where God wants us to play the role that we should pray. David chose to go with the Lord. And chose to walk with the Lord. 
That's why David said in one of the Psalms, the battle is not his, but it's the Lord's. Can we be leaving those battles in our lives to the Lord? And when I say battles, there are so many types of battles. Relationship with each other. Husband, wife. It's not all well. There are battles in there. How do we handle them? We need to leave them to the Lord and not fight them ourselves. So, in marriages, battles in life are many. Life struggles, economic struggles, relationship with your brother, with your sister, with your father, with your mother. They are all battles all over. Let's learn to leave them to the Lord and fight them in the right way. Now, this spirit that was my passion uh, that I read about um, this distressing spirit. How do we, because this distressing spirit comes from the Lord. So, we have them all over. But how are they calmed down? And they're all over. And they're sent from the Lord. It's not from the devil. It's not from Satan. They are from the Lord. So God can bring a distressing spirit in your life. But how did Saul overcome this, that distressing spirit? By having somebody to play music. And that was David, his enemy. So that this distressing spirit can be calmed down. Many times we have those distressing spirits. So there's something so special. When we're in the service and singing and praising God, it came to my mind and something came to my mind. This is the right place to be in, in God's house. Whereby we come and dance for the Lord, rejoice together, so that this distressing spirit can go away. Just like the one of soul. So the secret of actually removing those distressing spirits when I talk about distressing spirit, I'm talking about situations whereby you can have depression in life because of those battles. You are depressed. You are put down. You feel it's not working. You feel uh, discouraged. Those are distressing spirit. I work with uh, uh, my uh, bishop uh, so about it. I, uh, in my business that I do in the United States of America, I deal with people, uh, I take care of people who are in depression, people who are disturbing their mind, disarranged, people who, are, who are cannot be able to go in life by themselves. They need help. And I know that they are in our midst, they are in our community here in Kenya. They are there, they could be here, you are in that state. So. I have learned, because it's very challenging, like uh, 10 people, you're looking after, like you know, all of them, they're all over you, and you're, you're, you're born again. You are expected to bring uh, healing to these people, a message of healing to them. And the way that, the best way to overcome that is to learn how to walk with the Lord, and to know the secrets of God like David knew. David had secrets of knowing how to die. And that's why David, he has written so many, actually all, all the Psalms, if you open in one of the Psalms, book of Psalms, it's about David talking to God. Do we have Psalms in our lives? Do we have Psalms in our lives talking to God all the time? Do we have those Psalms continually talking to God, walking with God? Do we have them? God wants us to connected with him and to have the, a life of walking with God like the example of our brother David. He learned how to just go before the Lord when things are so bad and talk to God and, and leave it to the Lord. That way, those distressing spirits, those things that are pressing you down, you'll be an overcomer. You'll be a conqueror. 
You'll be a victor. You have joy. You have peace. You have victory. You have confidence in life and hope of eternity. When you set the law before you, so that those disturbing things, those distressing things in life, and then at that position, you learn how to just go before the Lord by worshiping. Sometimes in the US, I, I, I learn how to, um, because we're so busy and, and so the environment is so distressful, and I, uh, I got prayer walking. Prayer walking is I just sit myself like an hour, and I, I go around the compound and in the neighborhood. I go singing, talking to God, move around, talking to God, praising God. By the time I come back, I'm a different person. I'm changed. In that way, I'm able to deliver that which God has in me to deliver it to others. And that's the only way that we can be the light of the world and the salt of the world. Sometimes I, do, I don't even have to tell anybody who I am. And I go and in their business they say, are you a pastor? And I haven't spoken a word. So we are here to emulate, to see that we are united in the body of Christ, united with God, united with each other. Like we see these three, um, there's this other relationship that I see in this scripture that I read in chapter 18 about the spirit of David were knit together with the spirit of Jonathan, the son of uh, Saul. They were knit together. And the story goes behind there that they became so intimate, that David and Jonathan, so intimate, that even the father of Jonathan was jealous. And don't forget, Saul was anointed. So all of them are anointed. We are all anointed. But battles are there. Conflicts are there. So, this is about us learning from this scripture. That we need to live a life of just a life of total surrender to God. Just God. Just God in our lives. And not to rising against our, each other or talking ill of each other. Talking against uh, talking bad things that would not bring unity. Unity, unity in the body of Christ is paramount. The word of God says in the book of uh, Psalms 133, Behold how good it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. For in that unity, God commands blessing. So you will be blessed when you pursue that unity and you'll be part of that unity. Seek unity. In this church, I see a lot of people who are serious about God and I know that you are united by uh, under one God, under one Holy Spirit, and under the leadership of your bishop, I see a church growing. I see a church getting stronger and stronger. And you'll be blessed. And you'll be in the position where God wants you to be. And you'll be the light of the world. You'll be happy and you, you feel you are part of the church. Because that is very, very important. We are all a church family. Members of the body of Christ. We are all members of we need to be united so that we can be able to deliver. That's the reason why we started a church in USA because we found out there are things that go on there that are not connected. Like the church there is about it's not like the way you you the way you are united in that you come serving, not because the bishop told you or the pastor told you, but because you have a calling. That calling is what we need to keep it going on. That's why we are in the United States as a church, a different church. We love just, just like you uh, on Saturdays and Sundays. We just serving and being the church. Continue praying for us as we continue praying for you. For God has called us to serve. Not just to come and sit in the pews or just be there. But to, I, I normally quote this church as an example to my members of our church church that I know our church whereby this is not my first time to be this church and I love the way people are committed to serve in the church that like diligently throughout the weekend you just want to serve the Lord go out there in the community 
you testify, you go, you have uh, homes, home sales. This is this is this is original church, the church of book of Acts, where love is expressed, where unity can be seen. And I know that you have a stable leadership at the Bishop of Kimani and his leadership to continue on in this good work of the Church of Jesus Christ. So that we can, when we come here, we can come with other other visitors and come and see you love God and you can be a blessing to them and you can also be a blessing to, to you. May God bless you and keep you and His face shine upon you and the peace of God that supports understanding be upon you. Joy of the Lord be upon you. God bless you.